Obviously, you're a great student. You're a great test taker. No doubt about it. That is not enough to get into medical school. Application Renovation Season 4, Episode 11. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. I'm excited to talk with you. I think this will be, maybe, maybe you will be the only person that I have talked to that have the stats that you have. So first and foremost, congrats on your stats. Very, very impressive, uh, and we'll get to those in a second. But I wanted to talk to you and and have you on, and thank you for for coming and being on and being vulnerable, and let me let me pick you apart here, because the medical school application, as I think you've seen, is so much more than just do you have perfect stats, right? And I use that word very uh, precisely perfect stats because you, you have perfect stats. Um, let's talk about the nuts and bolts of you applying to medical school. I think this is just your first application cycle and one interview. No, no other interviews since you've applied to be on the show. That's correct. Yeah. Um, okay. no other interviews. And how did that <clears throat> one interview go? Um, to be honest, uh, I'm not sure, but well, let me let me see. Right after the interview, I wasn't sure because I did one mock interview with someone. Okay, but it wasn't the same as a real interview. Like the real interview was 30 minutes, and it felt like it went by in 30 seconds. Like yeah. Afterwards, I was like, I didn't know what to think. But um, the school I got an interview at, they review it every month, okay. and it's only been one month so far. But I didn't hear back. So from that, I was kind of leaning towards it. Didn't go very well. But right after the interview, I was like, either it was good or it was bad. Like, I honestly couldn't right. tell. So it, it wasn't like, I didn't feel great, but I didn't feel horrible. So Got it. Okay. Uh, and we're terrible jubs, uh, judges of how we do anyway. So um, that's, that's not terrible. Okay. Based on your application cycle, were you surprised you only got one interview? Were you excited to get one interview? Uh, re reflect back and talk about kind of where you think maybe things went wrong. One of the uh, major things is that I submitted my application very late. Mm -hmm. um, so I already had some concerns, mild concerns or moderate concerns about my works and activities because um, I didn't become pre-med until the second half of my uh, college career. So I was pretty concerned about the late submission, okay. but I kind of was still hopeful because I heard that if you have high stats, it's okay if you apply a little bit later. So, but to answer your question directly, um, I was expecting more interviews at least. I wasn't expecting necessarily many acceptances, but uh, I was uh, expecting more interviews. And then as the cycle went on and I was getting, uh, some rejections and a lot of silence. I kind of, it was like in waves, like sometimes I lost hope other times. I was like, oh, there's still hope left, but okay. now the cycle's pretty much done. So I was expecting more interviews. Okay, yeah, and, and we'll, again, we'll, we'll see why you were expecting more interviews here in a second. So let's go ahead and jump into application and see what's going on here. Demographic information, um, uh, you speak a couple different languages, which is awesome. Uh, no big red flags. Uh, obviously, most of the demographic or all of the demographic information is, is redacted out. Uh, no red flags, uh, no institutional actions, arrest felonies, etc. So that's great. We get to transcript, and we're going to see lots of A's. Um, so you came in with uh, lots of classes that you tested out of or you got AP credit for, which is awesome. Uh, Go Gators, by the way. Um, I, I love it. I love it. So we look at, oh, it's, it's fun seeing some of these, these course numbers. I'm like, oh, I remember that course. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. Go, going through and, and seeing all of these A's. Why were you so successful, do you think, in, uh, in college? Honestly, uh, I think there's a lot of factors. 
the biggest factor um, that could prevent most people from getting AIDS is thankfully I didn't have any like major life events or major health concerns that a lot of people who might have the potential to get all AIDS don't get it. But I think I took uh, a lot of science courses, which um, I had a very, I think I just had very good teachers in my first few years yeah. that kind of gave me very good foundations for my science courses and my humanities courses. Okay. So I think I just had amazing teachers and they taught me amazingly and what they taught me at the beginning carried me through like the skills and techniques and everything. So awesome. really it's amazing teachers. So go Gators. Yeah. Go Gators. That's, that's, that's what I would expect. Uh, the faculty at University of Florida. Top notch. All right. So the first time I think I've ever seen uh, a perfect score on the MCAT from a student, right? We talk like, oh, it's possible. Uh, nobody ever sees it. Were you expecting a perfect score on the MCAT? Were you scoring not perfect scores on your full length exams? Not at all. Uh, <laughs> my full lengths that I was averaging like 523 and my highest, I got one 527. But the day of, I even remember some questions, looked it up afterwards. I at least got four questions wrong. So <laughs> I was hoping for a 520. I was extremely surprised, but happy yeah, to surprise. That's, that's awesome. So 4.0, 528, perfect, literally perfect stats. So a lot of students will see that and they'll go, oh, right, shoe in a shoe in for medical school, because that's all schools care about. <laughs> you got one interview, just one interview, right? So obviously, there's more to the story than just perfect stats. So congrats on that. Um, nobody can take away those stats. Let's take a look at who you are in terms of your extracurricular activities and your personal statement to see maybe where there uh, may be something missing, okay? So we get to uh, Dean's Medal, Phi Beta Kappa, Anderson Scholar, so some awards, recognitions, uh, honors stuff, uh, simple, basic kind of stuff here, uh, nothing, nothing to talk about. We get to medical scribe, medical clinical here, which is great. I'm like, okay, whew, we have we have some clinical experience. But you started it just a couple months before you applied to medical school, and you're ending it a couple months after you applied to medical school for a total of 600 hours. So right off the bat, I see a, a, a red flag. I hope that there's more clinical experience that I'm going to see. I That's my hope. Because if this is your only clinical experience, it looks like you're just checking off a box. Be like, I'm a perfect student, GPA, MCAT wise. I, I, I guess I need some clinical experience to show that I, I did that check. Okay, I'm done. A couple months, I'm good. Okay. So that's what it's going to look at, uh, look like. So you have a nice little story here. Love stories. So you, you learned a little bit from watching some of my videos. But your story is a sales pitch. Your story is, I'm a very empathetic person. When you're looking at your story, the goal here is, right, after a thoughtful pause, I explained to him that we cared about him. We're only there because we wanted to help him. The patient felt my sincerity, right? You're not telling a story to tell a story. You're telling a story to show how empathetic and compassionate you are, which is kind of a sales pitch, right? It's a, it's a very manipulative way of, of telling a story. So try to stay away from that sales pitchy kind of story and just tell the story of interacting with a patient without needing to go into, look at how amazing and compassionate I am, Okay. Um, so I have one question about that, yeah. actually. So is it more the story itself? So when, when you're saying that this issue with the story, is the issue related to the story itself or the way in which I related the story? Uh, it, it could be just the way that you relate the story. You could you could use the same exact encounter, but mm -hmm. frame it in a different way, and it would be perfectly fine. Okay. okay. I, I would say that y'all are are taking too effing long you have it bleeped out here mm -hmm. probably a little bit too much for for the application i don't, yeah, I don't, I I don't think sure you need to go there yeah, yeah so a little bit over the top potentially uh but 
the just the again the angle that you're coming at in terms of like look how compassionate blah 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 like avoid that kind of stuff all right so we have some clinical experience great it cuts off um which i don't like to see so we'll we'll keep looking you have presentations posters here next ufcur spring and ufcur fall basically the same exact activity you just duplicated it. And obviously maybe there's something different going on. We redacted out the experience description itself. Um, okay. It was two different posters in that case. Yeah. And, and so it just, it looks like fluff. You're like, well, there's, there's not a lot there. The experience descriptions obviously don't have 700 characters. Just looking at the, the length of the redaction box here. Um, and so obviously not super impactful could have been put into one. Uh, okay. so I look at that and I go, okay, little, a little fluffy. All right. So, okay. Okay. Well, we'll move on. Uh, Medigator's virtual shadowing. They did mm -hmm. from October, 2020 to November, 2020. Why, like, why stop shadowing? There's lots of virtual shadowing opportunities online. Why not continue doing some sort of virtual shadowing? Um, that's a good question. Actually, uh, they did. It was for two months uh, that semester, and they had it the next semester. But I kind of wanted to move on to something where, like, I was actually like physically doing something, like like clinical experience, and that's why. So the next semester, I was trying to focus on, uh, and that after October of that semester, I was trying to apply to a lot of organizations, apply to a lot of jobs, but unfortunately, I wasn't accepted to any job or any volunteer organization until like right after I graduated um, with the scribe. So I just kind of wanted to find something else and I wasn't able to find anything else. But you could have kept doing some sort of virtual shadowing. I, I do virtual shadowing every Monday and you can watch the recording all week long. That doesn't take much time or effort other than sitting on the couch and watching the computer screen for an hour. So um, again, we get to this point if the medical scribe being a couple months long is check. I'm done. This is another, okay, check. I got shadowing. I'm done. Okay. okay. So that's what it potentially looks like. You, you, I highlighted here the last couple sentences or last couple lines here. Um, she lists, uh, listed many qualities, but the one that she strongly emphasized as being the most important one was being a good listener. She said that to be a psychiatrist, one must enjoy listening. Her profile of a psychiatrist aligned perfectly with my values and it further inspired me to go down the medical path. It's a very, very, very common way for students to focus a, an application. Being a doctor requires good listening. I'm a good listener. Psh, I should be a doctor, right? That's basic, you literally wrote that, mm -hmm. right? The goal of the application isn't to show the reader, you need to be a good listener to be a doctor, I'm a good listener. You have to be compassionate to be a doctor, I'm compassionate. You have to be empathetic to be a doctor, I'm empathetic. That's what, like, <laughs> if I were to say like 85% of the people on application renovation, that's how they set up their application. You have to be this, 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 and this. I'm that, 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 and that. It's a, it's a marriage made in heaven. I should be a doctor. Give me a white coat. Okay. The goal of the application is who are you? Who are you? Not I'm empathetic. I'm compassionate. I'm hardworking. I'm whatever. Who are you? What have you done with your life? Not okay. in terms of how has it prepared you to be a doctor? Just what have you done? What do you do with your time? help the, the reader paint a picture for them so they understand who you are. Well, for this one, um, I kind of, that's what I was trying to do at the end. I said, it further inspired me to go down the medical path. So that's what the, I was but, trying to do. But, but outside of, it further inspired me to go down the medical path because I'm a good listener and she said you have to be a good listener. Like that's the only tie-in that I see. Okay. Right? All right, I think I get what you're saying, maybe. 
if you expand it out potentially, right, it further inspired me to go down the path of the medical, or go down the medical path because so that, right, if there was more there to explain uh, okay. why it further inspired you other than what you had just said of good listener, good listener, boom, done, I'm going to be a doctor. Okay, I can't actually. I get what you're saying now. I the way I worded it is not like what I was thinking. What I wrote was not what I was thinking. <laughs> you're not the first person. That's okay. Um, all right. So we have a tutor at exam review, uh, and this is a lot of hours, right? From 2018 to 2021. So if there was ever a question of like, what were you doing with your time? Why weren't you getting clinical experience? Was it just because you were focused on being a 4.0 student? Well, no, like you were a tutor for a bunch of hours. So the question would be, well, why were you a tutor and not a volunteer at Shands, right? Volunteering, getting clinical experience, doing whatever. So there's some questionable, like what's, what's going on? Now, you mentioned earlier, you didn't decide to be pre-med until a little bit later, which perfectly fine, right? That that may explain everything. Um, but it does show that you were doing some other things here. So uh, no, no specific excuse other than you came to this a little bit later. Uh, again, research, lab, lots of hours, lots of stuff going on. Uh, and, and things that uh, you're doing, studying epigenetics and all this stuff, starting in 2018, right? Since freshman year. And so you have this story of, well, I wasn't pre-med, but you have this research in this epigenetics lab that kind of points to you being interested in in the human body and epigenetics and what, like, so there's some pieces here that aren't aligning necessarily with your story. So what were you doing in this lab? That is a very good question, actually. Thank you for asking. So when I started, I actually, as a freshman, well, before the summer, I wanted to do linguistics, but I wanted to do neuroscience because I took an AP psychology class. So when I came into university, that's what I wanted to do. And I was like, oh, I have to do research so I can get experience of like, because that's what neuroscientists do. But then after about a year, I switched to physics, but I kept both of, um, I bet kept both majors and really the reason I'd never left the lab was because I, I loved the people there. And I just like, I, I, I did want to leave the lab like many times, multiple times. I told myself I would leave, but it's really the people that I love the people I worked with. So, um, yeah, so I did start interested in neuroscience Then I switched to physics after one year and then like a year and a half later, I was interested in uh, pre-med. So neuroscience, not to be a doctor, but neuroscience to be a neuroscientist. Yeah, basically like a psychologist or a neuroscientist. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Like a researcher, a researcher. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, and then a detour and then pre-med. Okay. So that yes. explains working in a lab that kind of is related to medicine, health, et cetera. All right. Um, hobbies, walking. Interesting. Um, uh, the the hobby on there, only 200 hours. I, I, f I would figure you'd walk a little bit more. Obviously, UF campus is pretty big, so you're walking a lot. So we're riding a bike a lot. Um, that's okay. I love having hobbies on there. You have another hobby here at the end as well, uh, studying French. Um, and then you have your quiz bowl here. So we get to the end of the activities, and I go, uh-oh right? My, my fears have come true. The scribe position is your only clinical experience. And it's only for what, whatever it was, right? The five, six, six months, 600 hours, and you're stopping it as soon as you're like, okay, my application's in, I don't have to do that anymore. Like I'm done. Shadowing, no in-person shadowing. You did uh, a couple months of the Medigators or whatever it was, virtual shadowing. Okay, I'm done. Accept me. I'm a 4.0528 student. Just like our, our last episode of application renovation where the student had 
zero clinical, zero shadowing. When you are checking boxes, that's basically just as bad as having none. Even okay. when you're a perfect student, perfect grades will not overcome a lack of experience to help the school, the reviewer, the admissions committee to understand that you know what you're getting yourself into. Obviously, you're smart enough to be a doctor. Obviously. Obviously, you're a great student. You're a great test taker. No doubt about it. That is not enough to get into medical school for the most part, right? One school out there was like, we'll take a flyer on this kid and see, hopefully, maybe there's more to his story that maybe he just didn't put in his application. So we're gonna invite him for an interview. And my guess is that during the interview, they realized, oh yeah, he, he definitely doesn't have enough experience, so we're gonna pass. Okay. And, and um, hopefully, maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, you get into medical school, right? I'm not saying you're not going to. You still, still got that one school. Until they reject you, there's still a chance. Um, but probably not. Just, again, lack of experience. So we get through the activity section. We, we have some research. Very little shadowing clinical, kind of one and done. Okay, check the box. And then here you have this studying French and, and you mention here in October, 2021, which explains stopping scribing, you went off to France, right? Where you are, I think you're, you're still away. Um, yeah. And, and you're, you're spending seven months as a, an English language teaching assistant for high schoolers. So you are saying on one hand, hey, I wanna be a doctor. I'm a pre-med student, I have perfect stats, I wanna be a doctor. I have a couple months of experience doing one thing and another, and now I'm off in France teaching teaching English. So it, it looks very sporadic, right? Of like, do you wanna do this or do you wanna do that? You, yeah. you, you have no solid story to back up this this uh, argument that you're making, I want to be a doctor. Yeah, honestly, I think I kind of agree with you. I did not, my intention was not just to check boxes. It was because I applied to the French thing like way before, like in uh, like October of 2020. Yeah. But I definitely see what you're saying. And I do agree that um, I, I did have that issue with writing my personal statement that I felt like my story was like, it wasn't a simple story. Like, no, I'm not trying to say every, other people's stories are simple, but it wasn't straightforward. And I was struggling on how to explain my journey just simply. And I think um, you're right that I didn't succeed in explaining my story because it seems like it's all over the place. Yeah. Like, uh, so. It, it, and it's allowed. It's allowed to be all over the place as long as it gets to okay, I'm here and I'm staying here, All right? You're okay. allowed to not be pre-med <clears throat> starting college. You're allowed mm -hmm. to not be pre-med when you graduate. But at some point you have this life-changing, that's a hy hyperbolic, you, you have a time in your life where you're like, you know what, I wanna be a doctor. Now I'm pre-med. Now I'm gonna get the classes that I need. I'm gonna take the MCAT. And I'm going to get the experiences to prove that I want to be a doctor to myself and to the medical schools. And you never got to that last point and, and stayed there. You're like, okay, I'm here. Okay, now I'm gone. So okay. do you really want to? Or you're just like, well, I'm smart enough to. I might as well. No, I definitely, definitely really want to. Definitely. Okay. Before, before I did the scribe job, which was... The time that was around the time when I applied to the France program. Yeah. At that time, it was something I was thinking about. But after I did my scribe job over the summer, I definitely want to do it. But I completely get what you're saying. That's not the point of what you're saying. So yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So that that basically, in a nutshell, is what happens when even with perfect stats, students don't get into medical school because. You, you haven't told a good enough story as to why you're here, okay? 
and schools are just very skittish. They're like, ah, like if, if you're not positive you want to be here, you're going to come here for one semester or two semesters and then bail. Like that looks bad on them. So they, they don't want to do that. So we, we get to the personal statement. And so I'm basically assuming your personal statement is not going to be good for based on how I like personal statements, which is the story of why you want to be a doctor, because you don't have a lot of clinical experiences to support this uh, reason for wanting to be a doctor. So we get to um, we get to kiosk and walking the felted hallway, demand for tutoring. So you start off with this tutoring uh, kind of story. And I'm not sure what the goal of the story is here, other than the one sentence I have highlighted here, yet, despite the demands of my job, I never felt tired, right? So going back to what I mentioned earlier of students have this very kind of classic way of writing an application of you have to be compassionate to be a doctor, I'm compassionate. You have to be hardworking to be a doctor, I'm hardworking. You have to be this to be a doctor, I'm this. Being a doctor requires lots of lots of time and, and not a lot of sleep as a resident. Well, guess what? I've worked in a job with lots of demands and I was never tired. Therefore, I'm ready for residency. Right? Yep. Whether you did that on purpose or subconsciously, like this is what happens with, with students. I see this, I see this all the time. I have I've reviewed enough of these. Okay. Um and, and you basically, your whole kind of reason for the tutoring event here is being a tutor is like being a doctor. You're working with individual people. You're listening to their stories, trying to, trying to diagnose them, trying to, to, to treat them so that they fix their blood pressure, they fix their physics grade. Right? Yeah, the, the, I, I, the, I, I get what you're saying. The comparison game never works, right? As a doctor, like if I were reading this and I'm an old crusty white dude, I, I would be like a, a, appalled, like being a doctor, like being a tutor, like get out of here, come on, right? And, and that just is what happens when you don't have enough clinical experience, when you don't have shadowing to see what the role of a doctor is, what that life of a doctor is. I was just saying that's the thing that I kind of struggled with was I was trying to explain my journey to medicine. So at the beginning, uh, I do get what you're saying that it it seems like, and especially within the context of my activities, that it seem that, that makes it seem like I'm just checking boxes. It seems like I'm just saying, oh, I was a good tutor, so I'll be a good doctor. But I really was trying to go in chronological order yeah. of like before and, I was a pre med. Yeah, and what I'm and telling you I, is that being a tutor should not belong in your personal statement. Okay, the, but this, even if it this was is, a very big This is not an it. autobiography. This is not anything. You have tutor in your activity mm -hmm. section. The personal statement is, why do you want to be a doctor? Not tell me everything that you've done since you were, you were born. So I should not include it, even if it was a big um, factor in me um, leading me towards medicine? But it's not. How, how is tutoring leading you to being a doctor? Um, because it kind of made me question my path at the time. But that has, that, that made you question your path. It didn't, it didn't help you become a doctor, want to become a doctor. Okay. I think I get what you're saying. So it's about focusing on the actual doctor part rather than like, yeah. The buildup. So, so, so okay, you're, I get what you're saying that they don't want autobiography. You're, you're basically like, here's why I don't want to be a tutor. So I'm going to put it in there. Here's why I don't want to do this. Here's why I don't want to do that. Here's why I don't want to do this. So therefore, I'm going to be a doctor. All right. The goal of the personal statement is, why do you want to be a doctor? You formerly being a tutor has nothing to do with why you want to be a doctor other than it's something you did. And obviously you didn't want to be a tutor, like no, like not nobody. There are lots of like full-time tutors, <laughs> but I, I'm, you said you wanted to be a neuroscientist and then a physicist and then whatever. Right. So it's, it was, it wasn't a full-time gig potential anyway. It was just something you did. I'm assuming to make some money or whatever. Okay. Right. 
So it doesn't make sense in the context of it helped me realize I wasn't on the right path. Well, you were, you were, you were, you were a tutor as a part-time job. Of course it wasn't the right path. Maybe I, I don't know if I mis, I'm miscommunicating what I mean, or maybe I'm just misunderstanding you. But the reason I included tutoring was because before that I was thinking, um, whatever my career was going to be, it was going to be something like research, um, just because I like numbers and science and whatever. But tutoring was when I realized like what really energizes me is working with people. And then it was kind of like, I was abandoning my path and then I was searching for what can I do that involves people. And then the second paragraph is, how did I become turned towards medicine? And then the third path is, how I kind of confirmed that it was the path for me. But so I wasn't trying to mention tutoring by saying that I didn't want to do tutoring. It was that I wanted to do something with people, but I, I get, I think I understand what you're saying. Like it's not that important. Like no one cares about. I got it. I got it. So what are the two most cliche things that, that students use to support their reason for being a physician in a personal statement? The science and helping people. Yeah. So you use tutoring to show, oh, I want to help people. And then your next paragraph is, I like science. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's, uh... So so we get to the next paragraph. You realize that your career trajectory to becoming a physicist, like where, like that was just completely out of the blue. There's n- yeah, not a lot correct. of mention of physicist anywhere else. Uh, so being a physicist lacked human connection. I just told you I liked being a tutor. I liked the human connection. So that's off the table. And then it wasn't until biochemistry class that you learned about the impact on people through medicine. Well, biochemistry isn't medicine. Biochemistry is biochemistry. Um, as a psychology neuroscience major, but wait a minute, you just told me you wanted to be a physicist. How are you a psychology neuroscience major. So I'm just all over the place, which kind of goes back to like, you're here, you're there, you're everywhere with your activities. Like, so there's, there's some question of like your, your commitment to things like in, you're in and out of everything. Okay. So who's to say tomorrow you wake up and you're like, well, actually I want to go to law school. I would not want to go to law school. But. <laughs> Thank God. Like, who wants to go to law school? Um, but that, like, that's the question. Like, it's just, what's going on here, right? Who are you? I don't know. Are you a physicist? Are you a psychology and neuroscience major? Are, are you a pre-med? Uh, I, I don't know what's going on. So, uh, and again, just super, super common cl- cliche, right? Not common, super cliche. I like science. I want to help people. Biochemistry, oh, biochemistry is medicine. No, it's not. Biochemistry is biochemistry. Yes, in medicine, we use a lot of biochemistry. But you don't have to be a doctor to use biochemistry. Right? So just trying to force these connections that just aren't there. There's something missing here. There's there's something missing from your story that I, I wonder. Are, are you comfortable talking about what your parents do? My dad is an engineer slash researcher. He's a researcher okay. with the engineering background. Okay. He does engineering research. And my mom was a teacher a long time ago, but a school teacher, and but only for a few years. And other than that, she took care of us, my, me and my siblings. Okay. So neither of them are doctors? No. Okay. No. I, I would have bet that, that one of your parents was a doctor. No, actually, they did want me to be a doctor for a long time. But, <laughs> Stereotypical, yep. <laughs> yeah, but I, I told them adamantly no, no, no for years. And finally, they gave up. And then after that, other stuff happened. So it's kind of like, um, it's pretty complicated. But uh, it, yeah, my parents don't really uh, have any... Uh, so, so pause for one second. What is complicated? This is my story with my parents. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. My relationship, yeah. <laughs> Got that. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to go into there. Um, all right. So we get to uh, this weird kind of what's your major? What's this path? What's it look like? Um, 
you weren't a pre-med student at the time. You had many friends in the biochemistry class, I'm assuming, who were. Mm -hmm. They would often talk about their clinical volunteering experiences and the interactions they had with patients, which I noticed shared similarities in, to my experiences with tutoring, which is why I had mentioned you put tutoring in there to say, hey, tutoring is basically like being a doctor, right? Because you, you, you made that tie in right there. Okay. Yeah. So no, tutoring is not like being a doctor. Tutoring is tutoring. Being a doctor is being a doctor. Um, the, the only similarity there is, is you're working with a person, right? So if you like working with a person, you don't have to be a doctor to do that, which is why the most cliche thing about, oh, I want to help people. Well, sure. Go help people. Go be an Uber driver. Get them from point A to point, point B. That's helping them. Right? Go bag their groceries at the grocery store. That's helping them. Okay? True. So the the helping people, human interaction angle for wanting to be a doctor just doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. So you get to hearing your friends talk about their dreams made me realize that I could be the one to facilitate this change and help lead people out of hell and into light. Whoa, like where did that come from? That that seemed like it came out of complete left field. What hell are you talking about? Yeah, this is what I was talking about when uh, I, I think I agree with you. I'm not answering your question directly, but I think I agree with you that my personal statement is all over the place because there are many things like that sentence where it has a meaning in my head, but I like I can't, I don't have time to explain it, so I'll just put it on there. But what I meant... <laughs> is being sick is kind of like uh like and maybe that's a controversial way to say it because it's saying like oh if you're sick like you're damned but that's kind of how i felt because i mentioned like um i had an injury to my foot mm -hmm. and it, it really felt like i was in hell at the time and then afterwards it was like i had a it was like i was reborn honestly that's how i felt okay so that's was i was like wow i yeah. really like my life it's like I went from hell, I was in hell, and now I'm in like paradise. So that's what I meant, but okay. I agree it's just out of nowhere. Yeah, so you have here, and I wrote that you have this seed, potential seed here, at least in, in terms of how I talk about a personal statement, of being 18, having this injury to your foot, having to be non-weight bearing. Like there's there's no story there. There's no support. Like did this did this have any effect on you wanting to be a physician? other than it gave you the exposure of being a patient. And it's okay if it didn't have any experience uh, or any kind of impact on you wanting to be a physician. It doesn't have to, but did it? Because you threw it in there, and I don't know why you threw it in there, other than to maybe support this, like, medicine helps people get out of their hell, whatever health issue they're going through. I definitely wouldn't use those words in a, in a future essay um, because okay. I, I think it. I think it's a little strong, right? People, obviously health issues, whatever people are dealing with, it sucks, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't equate it to hell. Um, so there's just like, I, I don't know what the point of that is. I, I don't know what the point of throwing in that you were injured at 18 other than to say, hey, like I was a patient, therefore I should be a doctor. Right, again, there's just not a lot of connection. You're just throwing a lot of stuff out there without a lot of intentionality other than I like science, I want to help people. You throw in here the job as a medical scribe, the second to last paragraph here, um, working 40 hours a week, replacing the tutoring shifts, uh, again, comparing, continuing this uh, comparison. Tutoring is like medicine, right? The principles I learned as a tutor still apply. Compassion, uh, uh, compassion allows patients to feel cared for and listening makes them feel understood. All right. Compassion and empathy are life. That's why it's easy to make the comparison between tutoring and, and being a doctor. Compassion and empathy are everything, no matter what you're doing. Okay? It's, it's just too, it's too easy to lean on it's too cliche, stay away from it. Okay. So okay. We, we get to the end. Uh, you have this story here. It's okay. 
But we get to the end and you kind of recap being a scribe, being a tutor, being a, a biochemistry student. You, you saw the trajectory of becoming a, physis, a physicist, being completely redirected and, make, and being a, a doctor instead. Again, I just don't think that you told that story well enough at all for me to understand. I was yeah, a tutor. I, I wanted to help agree. people. Oh, I like biochemistry and I can help people. I want to be a doctor. That's that's basically the, your story. So I'm sure there's more to the story, but for whatever reason, you were forced into whatever box for telling your stories the way that you did. And it just it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And it's it's hopefully not proof, right? <laughs> because it's just an N of one, you, that that stats don't equal an automatic acceptance no matter what, right? And yeah, so- Yeah, I was not expecting that, but yeah, yeah I agree. But, but lots of people are, right? Lots of people go on to Student Doctor Network and go, I have a 4.0, I have a 528, and everyone's like, oh, piece of cake, no problem. <laughs> go anywhere you want. It's just not true. You have to have experiences. You have to have the story to support it. So I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and being vulnerable and, and letting, letting the world kind of see your application so that they, both students with really strong stats and students with weaker stats understand that stats are just one part of this and that everything else matters as well. And if you have perfect totally stats agree. and all of this is junk, right, then it just still it doesn't work. There's a saying, I forget who's, who said it. Someone in my life said it. But they said, you can polish a turd, but it's still a turd. Right. So um, your, I mean, your application is what it is. It can be a lot stronger. It's not the worst I've seen by far. Um, and so I, I think you need to get some clinical experiences as soon as you can consistently. You need some shadowing experiences as soon as you can consistently. You're still out of the country. I would not apply again this next uh, cycle. I would come back to the states when you're when you're done with what you're doing now, and and get into continuing to scribe or, or doing something different if you if you want some variety, um, go and and get some shadowing experience, but but stay consistent in what you're doing, and then get some help whether that's through a service like Mapped, um, or just reading my personal statement book over again or my newer application process book just get some help with telling that story better, okay? Um, just to, to finalize here, your school list looks okay. Lots of uh, public schools on here. <clears throat> I forget, are, are you a California resident? Is that? No, I'm Florida resident. Oh, that's right, you're, yeah, you're a Florida resident. Um, so you have a couple public schools on here uh, from California, so uh obviously with your stats you probably went a little bit bigger than than maybe normal but not not the worst school list ever thoughts questions uh first of all i want to say i completely agree with you um it was about um this being a good example for other people that's one of the reasons i wanted to come onto here so if you're watching this right now take this and uh <laughs> learn from my mistakes. <laughs> yes. So yeah, learn from my mistakes. But second of all, I very much appreciate um, your time and your help. And I completely agree with what you're saying. I think one issue is I have a tendency to talk too much. You probably noticed in this uh, interview, I guess, as well. And it, the same is reflected in my writing. So I think uh, I really have to spend a lot of time to write something um, which other people, which will mean something to someone else. So I, I completely agree that what I wrote is kind of doesn't make sense to anyone who's not me. And like, it doesn't know, like, yeah, so I completely agree. And uh, I think it's very helpful. So I'm hopeful. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your time. 
So, um, yeah, so you definitely think I should wait um, another year. Honestly, that's not too bad, but yeah, because you don't you don't have experiences to add to a new application. You're in another country. You're not going to be able to get new experiences. So there's there a, a new application isn't going to change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So um, I, okay. I think um, if you were to wait a year, you wouldn't have to retake your MCAT. It'll still be valid yeah. for, for another year. So yeah. that's that's not a concern. I I, I don't think. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's any utility in applying again. Okay. You you could try. Right. You could try, but the the stories of having scribing for six months and twenty five hours of virtual shadowing, like that that is still not going to support you very well for okay. helping the reader understand why you want to be a doctor. Okay. And 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 making right. it seem uh sincere yeah yeah definitely um yeah that is a very big uh insight that i have gained from coming on this show is uh yeah i did not have any intention at all of checking boxes and actually i really dislike that pre-med mentality that like oh i have to do this to get into medical school i have to do this well i kind of Anyways, anyways, I know I talk for a lot, but <laughs> yeah, the fact that you got that impression uh, means I have a lot to work on <laughs> when it comes to communicating my ideas. Yeah, and it's not even communicating. It's 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 not communicating. It's it's let your actions show it. Right, come back to the yeah. states, get a job, <clears throat> stay in the job, be consistent with a job in yeah. the medical field. It doesn't have to be a full time job. It doesn't even have to be a job. It can be volunteering. If if there's something else yeah. that you're potentially passionate about, interested in, but be consistent with clinical and shadowing as well. Yeah, and that was a big concern I had before applying. Actually, I I almost didn't apply. Um, yeah, I didn't apply definitely uh, as a senior, and I almost didn't apply this cycle either. Okay, but. So I guess, yeah. I, well, I, uh, fingers crossed. Good luck. And if you need some help with uh, writing those essays, let us know. 